Hi, my name is Luke Thompson. I am an environmental science major with JCC, and today I'm going to be discussing my time at Allegheny State Park, working as an intern with the park stewardship staff, uh, specifically focusing on invasive species, and I will be uh, sharing everything that I learned in that time. This opportunity was made possible by FORCES, which is Friends of Recreation, Conservation, and Environmental Stewardship. It's an organization that gives students opportunities to uh, work in the conservation field. Japanese stilt grass was the uh, first species that we worked with. It's a very fast spreading annual grass, native as the name suggests to Japan. It was initially introduced to Allegheny State Park through infected soil during a culvert repair project. Um, now, previous to my time there, they had employed such methods as burning and herbicide application, um, but this produced mixed results. Um, and ultimately, we ended up pulling it all by hand. It's very easy to uproot, uh, although it can be a little bit difficult to identify amongst the other green grasses on the ground. Uh, but you can notice it specifically with these very blade-like leaves, as well as the uh, distinctive silver stripe down the midrib of the leaf. The spongy moth was another species that we worked with. Um, it is native to Western Europe and was introduced in the 1800s in an attempt to start a silk trade in the Americas by interbreeding the spongy moth with the silk moth. However, they are uh, too uh, genetically dissimilar to interbreed. So ultimately, we ended up with a, a highly invasive pest instead. Um, now, through the summer months, you can mostly identify, you can see these just about anywhere, and you can see these egg masses on houses and trees and uh, on logs on the ground. They are very fuzzy looking. Um, so we were surveying for them to decide whether uh, pesticide would be a, a logical um, treatment method uh, to find funding for. Now, uh, they tend to boom about every 10 to 15 years. Uh, so we were surveying to decide if a boom is on its way and whether or not it is worth handling. Now, uh, these populations tend to wear themselves out during peak years uh, because there's not a lot of genetic variation between them. And so uh, disease and um, parasites and stuff can eventually wipe out the population. Beech leaf disease is a new uh, illness which has come to beech trees in the uh, American Northeast. Now you can identify it by the striping on the leaf, as well as uh, the suspension of the terminal bud. And the leaves also take on a very uh, leathery texture. Now uh, this disease was first identified only a few years ago in Ohio, and it will ultimately lead to the death of the tree um, we do not yet have any treatment methods for it, and so we were doing these surveys in order to gain a better understanding of how fast it spreads and how it might spread as a whole by identifying um, the other trees within a stand and um, the severity of infection. The Asian jumping worm is native to uh, Eastern Asia. Now presently, the Asian jumping worm only affects a very small portion of the park, um, and there are no plans to uh, actually uh, get rid of the Asian jumping worm as it may prove too costly, but they are trying to keep it contained. Now, the Asian jumping worm can be identified by its very distinctive white clotellum, as well as uh, it tends to have a darker color than your average earthworm. Um, and also, when they are disturbed, you can see them thrash around violently. That is a very defining characteristic of them. Now in this image here, uh, we found these very late in the season, so the populations had already declined quite a bit. But, uh, and you can see that we pushed all of the debris, all of the leaf litter and twigs and things of that uh, nature away, and uh, the soil still looks very dry underneath. This is a result of the worms um, sapping all of the nutrients from the soil. Now, ultimately, they can be uh, gotten rid of by burning away all of the ground debris, which they would normally feed on. A few of the other projects we worked on um, were radio telemetry. We were tracking a bear named uh, A21 
throughout the park. Uh, throughout my uh, internship, we did not have very much luck identifying her, and we were afraid that she had crossed the Pennsylvania border and gotten poached or um, something of that nature. But ultimately, in the last few weeks of my time at Allegheny, we did end up locating her um, at a spot which I'm not sure I'm allowed to speak about. Um, but that was a very fascinating experience using the uh, radio antenna to track the bear. Uh, we also stocked pheasants, which were supplied by the DEC. Um, and we built a rake toss, which uh, I never actually got to use, but that can be useful for uh, collecting uh, vegetation from uh, the um, from different bodies of water. Ultimately, I would highly recommend this experience to anybody who wants to work in the field of conservation. It was an amazing experience. And uh, I definitely encourage everybody, if you want to work in the parks, reach out to your advisor or to a professor uh, and ask about forces. And um, I know that the parks are always looking for volunteers to help out. Thanks so much. Have a great day.